Make way there, the king is in France. That's the magic message that flashes ahead to bring the people out into the village streets, to send a thrill of expectancy and pride from end to end of his forces in the field. We don't have to tell you where or who they are. Their king has come to see them and they're on parade. With His Majesty, our Lord Gort, and members of the high command of both the French and British armies. And for almost every one of them, the king has a handshake. Uh -uh. The king has a handshake and a smile. But quite apart from the official inspection, at dozens of places along the road, the king insists on stopping to greet little groups of officers and men. On an average, His Majesty travels about 100 miles a day to cover in his tour the whole vast field of British operations in France. He inspects some of his men in a farmyard, where the chickens seem to think they've got much more right to be there. With the officers, the king greets the mayor of the village, who is also the landlord of the farm. And then this simple tour suddenly takes on the atmosphere of a great occasion. In a small provincial town, the king has his guest to lunch, the president and prime minister of France. Once again in this informal meeting is expressed friendship, understanding and unity of purpose. And now we record that part of the tour which the king spends with the RAF. He meets pilots who have actually engaged the enemy. And the king's response is, well done, carry on. His Majesty also sees the local mascot. And for gallantry in action, the King presents medals. For pulling his observer from a blazing plane, the Empire Gallantry Medal to Flying Officer R.C. Gravely. For navigating his damaged bomber to the base, though wounded, the Order of the British Empire to Sergeant F.H. Gardner. This visit of the King has made a deep impression on the French people. And to our men in the field, it has brought new heart. Side by side with the men of France, they stand ready for battle. <laughs>